Welcome back. General Mills out with better than expected earnings. The company sold a lot of Cheerios, a lot of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but maybe had a little bit of a challenging quarter in pet food. Let's get right to General Mills Chairman and CEO Jeff Harmon. And Jeff, always great to see, with, see you. Uh, it's been a while. Thanks for hopping on right after your earnings call here. Good quarter for you guys. Uh, beat on earnings. Guidance looked uh, intact. But let's start on that pet business. Um, you called out some weakness in wet uh, pet food and pet treats. Now, those things, stuff's not exactly cheap. It's a little expensive for some households. What do you think those trends there say about the U.S. economy? Well, Brian, first, it's it's good to be back with you again. And you're right, we had a good first quarter. In fact, we've had a good run over the last few years. We're a $20 billion business with $9 billion brands. As it relates to pet food, it was a tough quarter, but a couple pieces of context. The first is that we've doubled the size of our pet food business since we bought Blue Buffalo five years ago. And uh, we think this trend toward humanization is going to continue. In the short term, it is clear that mobility, uh, pet parents are more mobile than they have been and going back to the office more. And so they're treating less, a little bit less wet pet food. So that was a drag on our sales. However, our dry pet food sales were up. So that's positive. And in the short term, uh, consumers are seeking a little bit more value. And so we're taking actions like improving our advertising and doing what we call price pack architecture to make sure we hit certain price points. So even though our sales were flat, we're, we're thrilled with what Blue Buffalo has done for us and we see a bright future ahead for it. Jeff, wow, I, gosh, I remember when you guys made that Blue Buffalo acquisition. It seems like yesterday, but it's been a couple of years now uh, already. What is that, why is the consumer opting for dry dog food? Is, is there just, or and even cat food, is there just more value in that bigger bag than, than buying wet food? Yeah, there, there are really two reasons, Brian. The first is that there, there is more value in dry dog food. The price per pound is lower than it is for a wet pet food. The other thing is a lot more convenient. So you can leave out dry dog food or dry cat food and have your pet eat it throughout the day if you're not going to be there, which is something you probably don't want to do with wet pet food. And so for those two reasons, we're seeing nice growth in our uh, dry dog food business. You talked on the earnings call a lot about uh, standing up some bold advertising for Blue, uh, Blue Buffalo uh, in the coming quarters. Talk to us about that. Well, you know, Blue Buffalo was founded on the premise that we we feed our pets like family. And we want to make sure that, that pet parents know what's in Blue Buffalo and compare that to what's in other dog food. Because if you're going to pay a premium, which consumers do for things like for Blue Buffalo, you want to make sure you know that what you're getting is better than what you could have gotten otherwise. And so, especially as consumers are looking for value, we think it's important that, that consumers, pet parents know exactly what's in Blue Buffalo and why that's different than other pet foods. And so we call that the true blue promise. It's the way the brand was founded. We've stayed true to that. And we're kind of really going back to our roots. That focus on value by the consumer, Jeff, is that being reflected in those those namesake businesses like a like a Cheerios, like a Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and also in your snack business? You know, it, it, it is being, you know, when, when consumers get pressed, the first thing they, they, they go back to the supermarket, they go to at home eating. And so we are a value player when it comes to, to at home eating versus eating at restaurants. In fact, eating at restaurants is about four times more expensive. I can't afford to As go out, Jeff. I can't afford to go out. I, Darn is going to report earnings this week. Olive Garden, I mean, I can't afford this stuff anymore. It's crazy. But but as you say, you know, our, our cereal sales are good. And, and, that's be, and that's because cereal offers a great value. It's convenient. It tastes good. It's good for you. All of our cereals are whole grain. Yes, Cheerios is whole grain, but so is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. They also taste good. And so those are the three things that make cereal so attractive. And, and cereal tends to perform well in these kind of markets. You made a very important point on the earnings call, Jeff, you and your team. You said consumers might be focusing on value, but they're not eating less. Is that correct? Well, that, that is correct. You know, consumers just finding value, they're trying to find value in places where they shop. And so they, they're looking for places where they can get a better deal. And that might be a club store or a mass merchandiser or a dollar store. But they're also looking at things like the package size itself. And if I was getting a large size, now maybe I want to get a medium size because I want to, I want to make sure the things don't go to waste. Importantly, they're still looking to our brands as they as they always have, because it's also important uh, when you don't want to waste food that your family's going to eat it. And when you have products like General Mills with our nine billion dollar brands, they got there for a reason. And that's because consumers love them. And so even though consumers are looking for value, that only doesn't only mean price. It means convenience. It means great taste. It means nutrition. It really means something your family's going to eat. It sounds like uh, you and team are very focused over the next couple quarters at taking market share, whether it's more market share in cereal, more market share in snacks. Talk to us about the innovation, some new products that you have coming down the pipeline. 
Uh, you know, we're always we're always focused on on market share because it's it's one of the things that we can control, and we've grown our market share in more than 50% of our categories for five years in a row. And it's because we're focused on advertising. We're, our advertising was up double digits in the first quarter. Our new, As you mentioned, our new product innovation is really good. We have uh, Haagen-Dazs uh, in the yogurt aisle now, which uh, is off to a good start. We have a mini varieties of things like Lucky Charms and Cocoa Puffs. I mean, it's hard to resist those kind of things. And we have Haagen-Dazs ice cream outside the U.S., Macaron, which is off to a phenomenal start outside the U.S. And so we're really pleased with our new product efforts. In fact, in cereal, we have four of the top five new products over the last year and almost a 50% share of all new products in cereal. And so whether it's getting back to our good marketing, which we're doing, or innovating, or getting good distribution, or distribution is up this year, those are the kind of things that, that we're really focused on, is executing the things that we could control. Another thing that stood out to me, Jeff, is uh, as it pertains to guidance, you noted it looked like you're still factoring in moderating inflation. Now, it's not lost on me and the people watching this all over the world that today is Fed Day, and the Fed is likely to come out and say, well, inflation has moderated, but now it's starting to pick up with oil back over $100 a barrel. How concerned are you about the inflation outlook? Well, we've been dealing with inflation for the last few years. If you look at the last three years, including this one, inflation for our business is up 30%. Now, importantly, um, as we look at the year ahead, inflation is only 5%. So it's moderated from 13% last year to 5% this year. So it's gone down, but it hasn't gone away. And it's hard for me to see a scenario where inflation has is going to go away completely. It's at 5% for us this year. For us, the good news is we have productivity gains, and that's our first line of defense. We have about generated about 4% of savings in productivity every year. We have a little bit of pricing. And so we should be able to manage this okay. But for, for the viewers who think that inflation is going to zero, that's not the way we see it. And we, we believe that labor will probably be the main driving force of inflation, even if it's going to be less than what it was a year ago. Fair enough. And in the, in the last few minutes that we have uh, with you here, Jeff, uh, look, we showed your bio. You are not afraid of making big deals for this company. Now, you were rumored to have some interest in, in Hostess. Now, I know you can't talk too much about that. Uh, of course, uh, Smarker looks to have gotten uh, that one. But you have acknowledged that you've maybe been a little bit boring uh, with acquisitions on that earnings call. Talk to us about the priority to make that big deal at General Mills over the next 12 months. Yeah, we're really pleased. We, you're right. We don't talk about any specific um, deals and rumors and things like that. But we've been very consistent over time on what we think. I mean, the most important thing we can do is grow our core and grow our core business. And, and then we add on top of that. And we've been successful at growing, growing both our core business, but also successful at M&A. And it's true if you look at Blue Buffalo, if you look at Annie's, if you look at the Petrit business we bought from Tyson, TNT, Pizza Crest. So we have, we have made really good gains in acquisitions. And we'll look to make some acquisitions into the future. We think our growth rate now is roughly 2.5%. We'd like to add 50 basis points of growth through acquisitions and divestitures. But we're also disciplined as to how we do it. And we've always been disciplined. Uh, we've got a good balance sheet. Our, we like our core business, and, but we will still be on the lookout for, for assets that we think can accelerate our growth and mm -hmm. things that we, be, we will be particularly capable of doing well, but we'll be disciplined as we do that. So we've seen this battle for, for a hostess, but we've also seen Campbell, Campbell's Food, uh, of course, spend a lot of money to buy Rayo's pasta sauce. Does big food, is your industry at a moment where you need these type of really transformational acquisitions again, like they were done in the past to, to jumpstart sales growth? No, we don't. I mean, before the pandemic, before we bought Blue Buffalo, we were growing at a trajectory of zero to 1%. Now we think we're at two and a half. And so whether it's being more competitive on our core or through the acquisitions or divestitures we've done like Yoplay in Europe, we've added to our growth rate already. And so we don't need to add more in order to be able to grow. Now it and, and the idea of replacing what's happening now with growth is not something that we really consider. We look at long term and what's the long term potential of our business. And so um, while we would like to do deals, we like the businesses we have. We like the fact that our dividend is growing and we're returning money to shareholders. And if we don't find something we'll, uh, that we can grow, we will be happy to, to repurchase shares. Jeff, you almost got me yesterday in, the, in my local supermarket, almost picked up uh, some pumpkin spice Cheerios. I think I saw that on the shelves, right? I would recommend it. I'm sure you would, Jeff Harmony, General Mills, <laughs> Chairman and CEO. Always nice to get some time with you. Don't be a stranger. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Brian.